This is a pretty accurate picture of Vietnam today, where four generations have lived amid the wreckage of war, left now to scratch out the closing years of the 20th century under a cloud of economic and political uncertainty. Good evening, I'm Mike Roberts. It's been nearly two decades since the last American bomb fell in Vietnam, but the United States has yet to resolve an uncertainty of its own. Somehow, somewhere in Southeast Asia, is it possible that American prisoners of war or the remains of men missing in action are still held by our former enemies? For the past several weeks, Eyewitness News has been examining that issue, an examination that eventually took videographer Mike Beale and me to the Vietnamese capital itself. We hope this program will provide some perspective on the sights and sounds we found lingering beyond the battles. The flickering images from a quarter century ago are the worst ghosts of the Indochina War. American prisoners on cynical display beyond our reach. The haunting question is, do any remain so to this day? America is so desperate to settle more than 2,000 POW MIA cases that it established a permanent investigative office in a nation with which it has no diplomatic relations. A recent congressional delegation inspected the effort. Uh, at the time, it, uh, it was bigger than life. You know, really uh, incredibly big. Now it looks so small. During the period of Red McDaniel's captivity, he shared prison space with hundreds of other Americans, many of them held here, Wallow Prison, the infamous Hanoi Hilton. Among them was Florida Congressman Pete Peterson, the co-leader of last month's fact-finding trip to Hanoi. But Peterson was held first and longest at a camp on the outskirts of Hanoi. When he decided to pay it a surprise visit, Mike Beale's camera was there to record his impressions. Here's a, here's a fellow here. Maybe we can get in. Because uh, uh, this is the old uh, gatehouse, and the garage right here where I live for ages. How does it feel to be standing at these gates? Really, really. Uh, I guess a little exciting because you know I was always on the, uh, the Colonel will see what he can inside looking out. Uh, I've really never seen this gate. I've always blindfolded every time I was ever, whenever I passed through these gates. I lived here three different times. I lived in one cell right around the corner here for uh, three and a half years and just never moved. Is this where you were? You think? Yeah, this is the garage. I lived in this cell right here. Oh my God! You know this is incredible. my door here. Obviously can't get in. This is where I spent four years in this in this room right here. And it hadn't changed a bit from what I can see. Uh, it, I mean it's still the, this door has changed. We had a trap door here. But basically uh, those shutters I used to peer out for hours on end to uh, watch people walking back and forth. What's uh, the room like inside, Pete? Uh, it's just just a floor, and uh, there were uh, three uh, three pieces of wood, and we'd just throw a mat over the top of the uh, wood, and that was it. But these buildings also had prisoners back here. This is what we call the zoo annex. And uh, from, see those little portholes up there? We could, uh, we could put our hand up and uh, through those portholes, we could communicate to these guys over here. And just by using uh, a uh, hand code. And uh, that's, that was the major uh, way of communicating. How was your diet here? Six months of pumpkin, six months of uh, uh, grass soup. I started out in this room. This is the first room that I was ever in. And uh, I recall I was really lame at that time. We, I had to hobble down to this end somehow and uh, to, uh, to uh, shower, which was about a once a week at that time. That was in 1966. You're flying a two-seat F4. Yeah. 
What happened to your back? My back seater uh, got out also. He was not injured. He evaded for about a day, day and a half, uh, maybe two days. He was ultimately uh, captured, and it was uh, good that he was, frankly, because he was full of leeches and really, uh, really in trouble. You're ready to walk out for the last time. How does this that is it. feel? There is no more. Uh, not, no, I will not come back here. Our program tonight has been a look at the aftermath of war from a different perspective. Consider that 18 years, 260 days, 22 hours, and 10 minutes ago, this was part of a B-52 bomber about to be blasted from the sky above Hanoi. Five months later, the war would be over, leaving a generation to wonder just what it, what this, accomplished. Each war leaves in its wake both doubt and hope, but never, it seems, in a combination sufficient to prevent the next one. America must have wondered how much of this pounding Hanoi could absorb, and too late we learned the answer. All of it, despite a hurricane thoroughness with evidence visible even today. Where the damage was repaired, monuments went up as well. This one marks Ko Chui Street, one of two totally destroyed by bombing. In the water behind me, a woman cultivates Zam Wong, a vegetable that's part of the everyday Vietnamese diet. In the water beside her, another grim reminder of everyday occurrences during the war years. This B-52 and the men who were aboard fell from the sky December 27, 1972, at 10.20 p.m. We don't know the fate of the crew. But this must have been the kind of memorial Ho Chi Minh had in mind when he exhorted his people to think of the bombers as a source of new fish ponds and patties. Here, a memorial marks the capture of an American fighter bomber pilot who parachuted into this lake after being shot down by the defenders of a nearby power station on October 25, 1967. We do know his fate. John McCain went on to become a POW and eventually a U.S. Senator. This clinic is a memorial of sorts, built with donations by American Vietnam veterans, completed 10 months ago. It's medicine on its most ragged edge, but still among the best available. The final memorial on our tour was the National War Museum, where one army's trash is clearly another's treasure. But as the vanquished, that was not for us to say out loud. There, amid fighter jets and field artillery, are the pictures. We don't know who these men are or were, but we looked at each face, not with pride or with pity. We just looked until we could stand to look no more.